Hey everyone, and welcome to the 19th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Wormhole to automatically swap your pages during a live performance. Previously, we had used a solution that works using the MIDI mapping feature of Ableton. However, now we're going to replace it with an automated swap. The plugin that we use for swapping pages automatically is called Wormhole, and you can get it from Nev's website in the description. Similarly to how we did with MIDIFier, we can just move Wormhole into our user library. And then, we can copy it into our project folder, so it sticks with our project. Wormhole allows us to automatically switch a page whenever a certain button is pressed. A simple note will trigger the swap, so I should place it before the sample that I want the swap to occur on. In the main user interface, we get a list of 8 macros. That means Wormhole will affect that macro when a note is received. If it's turned off, Wormhole will not affect that macro. In order to control our chain selector with these macros, we first need to map our chain selector to a macro on the instrument rack. Ableton will now warn us that this is about to destroy our MIDI map, but since we're going to be using automated page swapping from now on, we can just replace the mapping. And then, we can simply set the desired macro value on wormhole. And now when I trigger this sample, the chain selector updates to our desired value. Note, however, that this does not swap the page on our lights track. To do that, we also need the same wormhole before our matching light effect. I'm also going to create a macro that goes the other way. When I press the snare button, I want to go back to the page with the kick button. So I will simply use a wormhole with a desired macro value of 0 and also copy that over to the sample. I've added a clap sound on the right side of the second page. And assuming I need to press both the snare and the clap at the same time as the last button on my page, this clap is not going to be played consistently across page swaps. If I play the clap slightly after the snare, then it will not fire at all because the page has already swapped. To do that, we just need to delay the page swap to give us more time to press the clap button, but we do not want to delay the triggering of the snare sample. To do this, we'll create a group for wormhole, and we're going to add a new chain. This bottom chain is going to bypass the original node to the snare so it plays immediately, while this chain up here will get delayed so that the page swap gets delayed. We do not want the note coming out of the wormhole later to affect our snare, so we're going to mute that chain. And now we construct a note length delay. Notice how the chain selector now does not immediately change. It gives a little bit of time for any extra button to be pressed. Remember to copy the wormhole rack and do the same for the light effect. To keep the ability to manually swap to a page of your choosing, we can simply recreate the MIDI map. However, with Wormhole, we can do better. In the samples track, we can create a chain that is only going to be filled with wormholes for the side buttons. This way, instead of using MIDI mapping, we will just have an array of 8 wormholes for each button. The benefits of this are the ability to assign a small light effect to the manual page swapping, and the ability to draw on the side buttons when creating a MIDI clip. The traditional MIDI mapping method would take over the inputs, so instead of notes being drawn on our MIDI editor, we would actually have the pages swapping in the background. Let's create an array of 8 wormholes for that part of the chain. Next, we will map each of them to a specific key. and then configure each of them to switch to their pages. Make sure that our wormhole chain can affect all of the pages, so it works no matter which page we're on. And now I can change the page without a proper MIDI map. I can copy the same chain over to my lights track, And now my lights track will switch as well. In addition to that, I get a little light indicator. And then we can assign a small light effect to it to make it look extra neat. That's gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye.